ESPN 690. We're going to talk a lot of football, but have you ever come on a show and, and followed wrestling talk with Shaquille O'Neal, AEW, and the rest? <laughs> You know, I can't say I followed uh, the wrestling talk with Shaquille O'Neal. That's a first. <laughs> Good luck. Stakes have never been higher. We cover everything here, Blake. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Blake Bettingfield, are you in Nashville? You still in Nashville? Is that where you're hanging out? I am in Nashville. I've been here 20 something years and uh, it's hard to leave. I've got kids in school here and they don't want to leave. So uh, it's a good place to live right now. It's a good place, all but the Titans. You might know that we don't <laughs> like the Titans much. And of course, you were only in the college scouting department with Tennessee for, oh, I don't know, like 19 years. So I, I, I guess I'm not supposed to say that to you. Uh, how big internally is that rivalry with the Jags? Can you feel it? You know, always. Uh, you know, I started back in 99, and that was the, the Super Bowl year for the Titans and a great year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it was always a rivalry because of the talent that Jacksonville had back in those days. It, it was really, um, you know, it was really something that you knew you had to go through Jacksonville to get to where you wanted in the playoffs and, and eventually the Super Bowl because they just had such great uh, skill and talent back then. There's no question about it. Blake Bettingfield with us. Hey, what does the, you know, we hear about the scouting department. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into the draft, and every team wants to build through the draft. Like, we, we cover the NFL to know that, all that stuff. Urban Myers, you know, resetting the whole thing down here in Jacksonville. But at the sake of sounding dumb, what is the you know the director of college scouting like what do you do day in day out as a director of college scouting you know the director of college scouting especially in the fall when the when the college football season is going on is is really kind of orchestrating uh the the college scouts underneath him the regional scouts the the other directors and really going out and maybe canvassing the country and making sure every prospect is being looked at the director will also go over the top and look at the top 150 to, to 200 uh, top players in the country. So he will travel as well uh, throughout the country, but mainly orchestrating kind of the other scouts, especially the area and regional scouts, and making sure that, that every player is looked at and we don't miss one. Uh, that's the fall part. The, the spring, it really amps up into kind of another area. You get involved as the director of college scouting. You get involved in free agency. You want to see the direction that the coaching staff wants to go in for the following year. Uh, leading up to draft meetings, combine, pro days, and then eventually the meetings right before the draft and, and then the draft itself. So it's a it's a 12-month job. It's, it's, you know, when you're not on the road, and I would travel roughly 130, 135 days a year. When wow. I wasn't on the road, I was in the office and working coaches hours then. It's a, it's a fun job. I'll, I call it work, but I don't think I ever worked a day in my life because all I got to do is watch football for a living. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Marriott points, you're probably still spending them. Uh, he's the scouting director no doubt. Uh, for the Tennessee <laughs> Titans for 19 years. Uh, now his own website, uh, bettingfieldsports.com. So you're dealing with uh, – all sorts of level players now what do you what are you exactly doing and and how are you impacting uh really the sport of football in the kind of your new gig you know i wanted to kind of uh, quit traveling and and start my own company i still have that passion to uh to be in football i still do some consulting in the nfl with different teams on on different positions and I, i've started working in the college uh, environment as well and what I've done is I, I go to different universities and help set up their recruiting departments just like a an NFL scouting department the, the recruiting departments on the college level have gotten so big now that um, I've got to go in set up a grading system evaluate the entire roster and teach the uh, the recruiters how to evaluate players and what to look for and then I've gotten into the high school area as well so what I've done there is uh, I've taken on a kind of an elite group of players and I help promote them using my contacts through 20 years in the NFL at the college level using my contacts to help uh, get players scholarships. And I've had a lot of success with that. And I always tell players uh, players and parents, I can't get you, I can't guarantee you a scholarship. <laughs> I can just guarantee that the right people are going to look at it because all those people are contacts and friends of mine from over the years of scouting. Blake, you know, when we talk about the modern NFL now, obviously the running back position in terms of draftability, you know, people always want to say, well, wait till, you know, at least the third round. The draft is so deep with running backs. Never spend a first round pick or even a second round pick on a running back. Well, if you look at your 
resume I guess you would say I mean two guys stick out to me as guys that you kind of I don't want to say risked it but like Chris Johnson for instance first round pick small school guy to Eastern Carolina obviously ran the blazing 40 yard dash and then Derrick Henry taking him in the second round like what went into that process like do you I guess you kind of share a little contrarian idea of you you should take a running back in the first or second round if he's good enough you know, I think it depends on the team, to be honest with you. It depends on the makeup of your team. At that point, when we took Chris Johnson, we really didn't have the other pieces in place on offense. And if you don't have an elite-level quarterback, if you don't have a franchise quarterback, you better have players on offense that can that can supplement that, uh, the inability or the, or the weaknesses of the quarterback that you have. And there's only a handful in the NFL every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Jacksonville is going to get one this year. Uh, in the draft, and, and they, they position themselves well to get somebody that is going to be looked at as a franchise type quarterback, someone that can carry the other players on offense. So, in Chris Johnson, for example, we didn't have the other offensive players to really stand out. We, we held him in high regard, thought he was a home run hitter. You know, going up, growing up uh, kind of in the tight organization, had the Eddie Georges, who were a, a consistent four yards to carry back big time you know 20 25 carries a game would end up getting you 100 yards but not someone that was a home run hitter type but we had the quarterback in Stephen there that was and so when when we took Chris Johnson we needed a home run hitter Uh, when you go to Derrick Henry Derrick Henry was a player that we valued so highly in the draft Uh, when he fell to the second round we had three second round picks it was just a a, a, in my opinion just a no-brainer at that point it was an offense that was really lacking uh, a number of offensive uh, talent players. It was a it was a head coach um, that Mike Malarkey that wanted to run the football, mm-hmm. and you know we had Demarco Murray as an aging type veteran running back and needed somebody to to kind of carry the load once he retired. and And I think a running back is, is really important today if you can get someone that is a difference maker. Just to take one in the first round that's not a difference maker. I think is a mistake in the draft. Uh, because there's other premium positions. I, I put the premium positions in the NFL at quarterback, left tackle, and pass rusher. And if you if you look in free agency this year alone, it's going to be rare because you're going to have some pass rushers available. But for the most part, left tackles, quarterbacks, and and pass rushers are usually not available, and you have to take those in the draft. Bettingfieldsports.com. Uh, appreciate the time. Blake Bettingfield joining us on Action Sports Chats on ESPN 690. Talking about scouting the process and, and as you get ready for the NFL draft, obviously it's a big one here in Jacksonville. 11 picks, a uh, ton of money to spend in free agency, all the rest. But uh, before I ask you a little bit uh, about even more of the process, I got to ask you more about Derrick Henry, man. He's a Jacksonville guy, Uly High School. You know, I've covered him since he was in eighth grade. And by the way, he was like as big as he is now in eighth grade, <laughs> and, uh, which you probably know. And, I mean, it's just incredible. It, he seemingly would get bigger every year I went over there, but I didn't know how he would get any bigger. And when he went to Alabama, people really thought Nick Saban was going to turn him into a linebacker and just said, you're not going to make it as a running back. And obviously, you know the story, national championship Heisman Trophy. But even in the NFL, and especially with his career off to somewhat of a slow start, I think the word out of Tennessee was they might even be looking into to trading him at one time before it really kicked in and they just started giving him the ball, giving him the ball, and now look at what he's been able to do. What were the discussions like around Derek? Uh, I mean, did you think he would be – this good 2000 yard guy offensive MVP or player of the year in the NFL potentially on his way to Canton Ohio I know you thought he'd be good you wouldn't have picked him in the second round but what kind of conversations go into a guy like that with his build and and the wear and tear that that he would take you know the 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 conversations with Derek was it was I thought it was pretty simple from a scouting perspective you look at his high school career highly successful ultra productive he goes to college and really was patient and waited his time to become the guy and when he did he was highly productive you know very competitive outstanding worker all the qualities you want to bring in that bell cow of your offense someone that's going to kind of set the tone of your team and when he came to the nfl he sat behind a demarco murray kind of an alpha dog demarco was an was an alpha dog personality really didn't want his reps taken whether in games or practice by Derek Henry because he saw the talent that Derek was bringing to the table and what ended up happening is Derek within that patience that he acquired at at Alabama with that stable of running backs they had 
he was able to be patient and wait his time. And when he got it, he took off and, and he never looked back. And that's the thing about Derek through the scouting process for a director or an area scout. It was such an easy evaluation. It was someone that I knew I could hang my hat on and say, at the very least, if we don't screw him up, if we don't, you know, keep changing offenses on him, if we kind of structure things around him, he's going to be a very successful player because he's already proven that with his track record of success. So it was really kind of an easy evaluation. Now, the evaluation takes on more than just what you've seen in the past. And what you have to do is not screw him up coaching-wise, organization-wise, and put players around him to be successful. And, and the team started to build the offensive line and you know brought in some other players to take a little bit of pressure off of him, which made him really successful. Did I see a 2,000-yard back in him? No, I can't say that. I, that was such a hard thing. I watched Chris Johnson go through it with so many big, long runs that kind of created that 2,000 yards when he had it. I never thought Derek would really achieve that kind of success, but – being what he was at Alabama and being what he was in high school, I could I could see that track record showing up in the NFL. I mean, I know all these names like on your website, from Albert Hainsworth to Derek to Taylor Lewan to Vince Young, Javon Curse. You know, you're, you it wasn't just one person; it was a, this, your whole staff. But two two thousand yard rushers, your staff, and you were a part of. I mean, I can't imagine anybody else can say that, right? No, I don't think there was a person. Somebody brought that up to me recently, and I said, you know, I don't, I, I'd have to go back and look if there was a, a director or, or scout that actually scouted two 2,000-yard rushers. I don't think that's happened, especially in today's football where everything is passing game. Uh, that That's kind of changed. It may not happen again for a long, long time until that cycle goes back to running the football a little bit more. Blake, you said it, and we've mentioned Trevor Lawrence this conversation prior here a little bit. Um, you know, and Jacksonville's excited for Trevor Lawrence. You start to hear the, you know, the experts, quote unquote, I say that obviously, where it's going to be Zach Wilson next or Justin Fields uh, after Trevor Lawrence. You know, I look at a guy like Vince Young, who obviously had the very promising college career, his rookie year in Tennessee, absolutely, I mean, kind of took the league by storm. And then, you know, with, with some injuries and obviously had some psychological issues as well, it just, uh, it didn't work out, I'm sure, like anybody wanted for Vince Young. What's the hardest thing to really, I guess, grade on a quarterback coming from college to the pros to see, is this guy going to work out or not? Because obviously on film it's one thing, but like, what's the hardest part to gauge exactly how he's going to do? You know, I think that's a great question, and it's, a, it's an ever-moving answer for me. I, I've gone back and self-scouted some of my evaluations that I've done on, on players, and, and Tom Brady was a great example of that, where I didn't have him very high. Like a lot of people, obviously, you know, 32 teams passed him up five different times, even the Patriots did, and then they ended up getting selected in the sixth round. So, you know, you get a player like that, and you start to look at his track record. We were talking about Derrick Henry. And you look at Tom Brady's track record going back to high school and the success he had not only as a football player but baseball player, getting drafted in baseball as a catcher. He goes to Michigan and they continue to try to replace him. I remember Drew Henson, ultra you mm -hmm. know pro, uh, prospect, went to play Major League Baseball, came back to Michigan, and they wanted him to be the, the quarterback. Tom Brady kept beating him out, winning ball games. He goes to the NFL, he sits behind a Drew Bledsoe, and Drew got hurt. He gets his opportunity and never looked back. But his track record of success, whether it was at Michigan or high school, is something that I've really started to look at. And, you know, you have to have a whole team to have a winning team. But some of the success can be individual success. So when I'm looking at quarterbacks now, Trevor Lawrence is a great example. If I'm not mistaken, his high school record was 52-2. and two. And you look at his college record, I think he only lost two games in college. This guy's had a a lot of success in a, in a long period of time if you go back to high school and college so will he have that success in the nfl track record is a great predictor of uh, future success and i think that's a good opportunity to think that he's going to be a winner on that next level <laughs> so when you look at a quarterback like trevor i would take him because of the success he's had in the past and obviously the other talent that he brings to the table oh do we hope so blake oh <laughs> man do we hope so blake bettingfield uh from uh nashville tennessee he was a director of college scouting and in the tennessee organization for 19 years now you can check him out bettingfieldsports.com that's bettingfield with two d's uh let me keep you for just two more minutes if we can uh, sure the how lucky do you have to get in your business and to that point, I think, listen, you can look at measurables and watch a guy on tape. It's like, oh, that guy's good. <laughs> but I'm talking from the personality side. 
uh, whether it's what Tennessee's dealing with and has been with Isaiah Wilson uh, to what the Jags have done with uh, Justin Blackman to a Telvin Smith and the list goes on long and long. You know, you just you just don't know some things um, or can you vet and do teams vet enough about that or do they just take chances sometimes on people's the motivation, drive, upbringing, whatever it might be. I don't know. Those things that don't say six foot three, runs a four two, uh, 220 pounds. You know, you have to take your blinders off at times and, and not just look, like you said, look at that, those physical attributes and say, ignore the other things, the red flags that continue to pop up. And, you know, we took a player uh, in my time, a Pac-Man Jones. We knew exactly what we were getting. I mean, there was no mistake there were going to be issues when he came to Tennessee. No mistake. But the blinders were on because we needed a corner. We needed somebody with some athleticism. And there were people that thought in the building that they could, could kind of control him or, or, or help him out. Those things usually don't happen when you become a pro. It just doesn't. Some people mature, no doubt about it. And I've seen examples of that. But a lot of times those type situations that they had growing up or had in college are going to even be more amplified on the on the NFL level. And you see those players like that. And, and sometimes it's players that have kind of, um, you know, maybe came out with a, you know, a, a better uh, personality, a better reputation, and then kind of went the wrong direction when some money got in their pocket. And, and a lot of people hanging on that, that, that they didn't need to really be around. So there are things that are created on the NFL level, but a lot of that, if you vet them well enough, if you do a good enough job of scouts, I always say as a scout, half their job is evaluation and the other half is private eye. You've got to go and find everything about this player, how they are in the locker room, how they are in the meeting rooms, but how they are when they go home. How are they when, they, when they're off, when they're away from the facility? And I think that's so important. So 50% of your job is evaluation, the other half is being a private eye. Blake, I love the analogy of you get sometimes you got to put the blinders on per se. And and I got to ask you this question. Back in 2009-2010, uh did you watch any Murray State film or, or were the <laughs> I can't blinders I on? This question. Or, 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 or the blinders on the whole time with that. <laughs> you know what? I love Murray, Kentucky. I, I'll say this, you know, I'm a, I'm a southern guy. I grew up in Alabama. I've been living in Nashville for a long time. And, I love Murray, Kentucky. I always enjoyed that drive. And, and I tell you what, Murray had a lot of players. And then they had this one big, lanky defensive end uh, that, that everyone in the NFL had to go see. And uh, I remember going up there and watching him practice multiple times and, uh, and actually <laughs> caught a game and uh, really liked him, especially for our team at that time. We were a 4-3 team with uh, defensive ends that were, were rushers primarily. And, you know, he really fit. And, you know, when he went to Jacksonville, it was kind of we knew we were going to see him, you know, twice a year. And but he was a player that we had on our board and, and would have taken for sure. All right. What kind of, so did, did you ever visit with the Titans, Austin Lane? I didn't visit with them, but, I mean, I, I talked to a scout at the you combine. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. uh, what, what would, like, your, your scouting notes have said <laughs> about Austin Lane? Future radio host? <laughs> Pretty much. A uh, few, few years in the league current like mma fighter audible chocolate voice i think was the first thing on that note <laughs> you know i remember i said he's a really nice guy that uh you know would probably do well outside of football no i'm not <laughs> kidding he was, he was a really good football player and he had that mm. one trait that we're all looking for he had a pass rush trait that we always look for and they're they're still looking for today and i remember austin lane and it's funny that uh when i when i um knew I was coming on with him, but I started to, to reflect back going to Murray, Kentucky, because uh, I love those days of, of going to those schools. Uh, those small school guys are tough, though, seriously. Uh, are they tough to scout? No, I, I think they're the best. When you go to a school like Murray, you're looking at one or two players only that are going to be on the NFL level. You know, you go to Florida State or Florida, you're looking at 15, and, yeah. I, and I enjoy looking at those one and two. I love spending more time with the coaches, and they really give you a lot more um, personable uh down-to-earth type type information about the player because they really care. You know, when you go through a factory like Florida, Florida State, Alabama, you know, that they're used to that every year. And I love that Murray, Kentucky, or, or wherever, you know, those small schools. We've taken a number of small school players. Cortland Finnegan came out of Sanford and different players. And That's they really right. just love when scouts come on campus and, and – evaluate their players that's good stuff blake bettingfield uh let's do it again before the draft uh, because i got about 15 more questions but sorry we already kept you longer than we promised 
No problem. Anytime. I can talk football all day. I appreciate it, appreciate man. It, man. Uh, bettingfieldsports.com. Check it out. Blake Bettingfield. Thanks, man. Have a great day. You bet. You too. All right. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's good.